My name is Elliot Ikile. I'm representing the Conservatives here tonight. Colin Craig couldn't be here because he's not the leader of our party. Leighton Baker is the leader of our party. I am coming from a youth background, heavy duty youth background. Not the sort that deals with little things, but the stuff that deals with teen suicide, murder, child molestation. I'm telling you right now that the last three decades have been terrible for our families. I can tell you that because I'm able to tell you exactly what it was like. And that is actually what the Conservatives stand for. What we have seen over three decades is the weakening of three things. Justice, democracy and family. That is what the Conservatives stand for. That is what we need to build strong families so that we have a society that we can be proud of and actually have what we used to hold so dear. That is what the Conservatives stand for. Justice, democracy, family. Imuna. Uh, yep, Elliot. <laughs> Until our housing stock has caught up, we are looking at net immigration, so whoever leaves our country, that's the amount of number that we're happy for to come in. Until housing stock comes up and then we can go back to normal immigration figures. In terms of refugees, we want to work with NGOs over in the field over there, so we take the most persecuted groups rather than the groups that the UN decide is most popular at the moment. Uh, Elliot, hit us with your ideas. Conservatives, we've discussed this quite a lot actually in the transport, but it never actually really goes to transport itself. You've heard many different ideas, very diverse ideas, each one that has merits and each one that has little issues with it. So that's always going to be a bit of a mess. The way the Conservatives look at it is what we want to do is to build an environment, to build a structured area where actually everyone's feeling safe on the bus, feeling safe on the trains. Was anyone caught up in the Christmas in a Park drama where there was heaps of youth gangs having a ruckus all, all down over at Bruruma? If you were, you know, I see a few hands, thank you. The fact is, is that that is unacceptable. The Conservatives want to provide an environment where actually you feel safe on the bus train, that you're not going to get followed behind at night, that you are going to be able to go from place to place, and it's all good. That's how the Conservatives feel about it. Car five. Okay, Elliot. Go for it. Right, so in terms of my roles for the last 15 years, both in and out of professions, I've taught emotional resilience as well. It's actually quite a tough area, and again, three decades of national labour policies have actually removed a lot of the elements that have created strong young people. In fact, a study was done last year which shows actually that your generation are actually suffering more personality disorders and dysphorias than any other. And now that's a massive problem. And I spend my life, not just in work, but even online and also with youth groups, actually talking, sharing, being privileged to understand stories. The mental health situation in New Zealand is extremely bad. In Southside, where I come from, in Whiranaki, it's terrible. It's terrible. You cannot get decent help. And that's actually something which is happening right now. The problem is, Many of us are losing the battle in terms of preventing them from having spillover effect into other areas. So. Elliot, hit me. Oh, sorry, I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> sorry. So the economy that we live under, it really is quite a bit of a, a fire economy, I guess, which is, the, of course, the finance, insurance, real estate style economy, and that is going to cause a lot of trouble with many of our people and many of our socioeconomic groups. Just bringing back what some people were talking about in terms of education, Actually, to be honest, I think that National Labour have both failed quite a lot in terms of building our kids. And I can't believe I'm going to say this. I actually support uh, David Seymour's idea around the charter schools, which were able to be quite flexible around how to build minds that could actually take on new information, assimilate it, and then use it in a very creative fashion. That's ex exactly what we need here. And it's also quite important to realise that the number one, that Singapore actually came first in the big STEM subjects. Now, we need to be taking a hold of some of what they're doing as well and just hitting our kids with it, building them to be strong, powerful warriors in education. Air and water are two vital components of life. Conservatives love life. We believe very strongly. <laughs> and I'm sure that'll come across real soon. The idea of it being sold to an organisation, person, entity or group is despicable to us. We do not see why water should be given to any of them. 
That said, we do understand also that actually farmers do need it for a big part of the industry that we have here. That the steel mill over in uh, Waiuku, wherever it is, need that water also. So we do understand also that it has to be part of the economy of New Zealand. So what we need to be very sure of is that we're approaching this very carefully. That it's a balance, a tension balance between econo economical growth and also giving it away. Thanks, Elliot. Elliot. As a Conservative, how do I sit there and plead with a teenager who I've been able to save off the line of suicide several times and failed twice? How do I then go and say, no worries, kill someone else? How do I also support euthanasia when my whole idea about passion, life, 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 protecting life is why you're here. Life is how we will protect. We will protect life forever. From the conception to death, we will protect life. Abortion sucks. Okay, um, Elliot, do you believe someone who falls pregnant because they're raped should be able to get an abortion? Yeah, that's a tough one. And in actual fact, that one... Oh, I can answer it. The, here, here is the first one. The first one is medical abortions are painful things, but that's fine. You've got to save the life of that mother, so that's fine, the medical ones. In terms of rape, which I believe consists of less than 1%, so it's a vast, vast majority are outside of that, that's actually up to the choice of the mother themselves, because that is a really tough thing. That was forced Just upon them. Yes, that's not fair. That's not cool at all. However, the vast majority of abortions are done due to a choice that was made previously. Mutual choice. OK, I could stay there for a while, but let's move on. Elliot. I agree very much fully with what Jamie has said. It is both of their faults. And since the 80s, that's what we've seen. We've seen some powerful division of equality going on, whereas New Zealand used to be such a wonderful place to grow up, and things used to be, I guess, so much better. I'm going to sound like an old guy, but that's, that's just how I feel. We've seen our families, I have seen our families, especially in South East and West Auckland, actually starting to suffer hugely. And now we have this new term, which we call working poor, which is so real that I'm having more families come into my office throughout the last decade actually suffering more and more. Why? Because they wake up every morning knowing that no matter how much they work, they're just going to come under the bills that they need to pay. They're not smoking dope. They're not getting drunk. They're not getting any of that sort of thing. They're working as hard as they can. They're taking their kids to school as much as they can. But they wake up and they're actually knowing that they're coming $10, $20 short. Now, what does that do to a psychology? It does some very terrible things. We know that inequality is coming. We know we're scattering around beside it. We know how to fix it, and that's to look at the economic system that was forced upon us in the 80s by Labour and refined by National in the years gone by. Elliot. The Conservatives were born out of a frustration, a growing frustration, from left and right voters. And we are not politicians, we are people who work on the front line trying to repair lives, trying to rebuild lives. And actually, if you have a look at the Conservative candidates and Conservative members, you'll find that that's what we do. We're frontliners. We don't, we're not politicians. But the fact is that the centre has actually been abandoned by National Labour. Sometimes they go far right, sometimes they go far left, and that's what happens. So we're here out of a reaction of that. We're here to restore what was lost and to rebuild what was destroyed. That's why we're here. Big round of applause to our, all of our candidates for getting on their taxpayer-funded flight here. 